This week, we're at the Viaduct Event Centre in Auckland for the fourth annual Attitude Awards. Opening the show, the amazing Sarah Holbold. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Simon Dello, and it is a pleasure and a privilege to be back again. And on behalf of the Attitude Awards Trust and Attitude Pictures, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to Your Excellencies, the Right Honourable Sir Jerry Mataparai and Janine Lady Mataparai, Dame Rosie Horton, Dame Susan Devoy, Sir James Wallace, and Sir Murray Helberg, the Chief Human Rights Commissioner and Attitude Awards Trustee David Rutherford, MPs Jacinda Ardern, Ruth Dyson, and Maggie Barry. Congratulations to you all and the Deputy Mayor of Auckland, Penny Hulse. It's a marvellous pleasure and a massive welcome goes out to all of you and to our finalists, of course. They are the stars of this evening. Of course, why are we here? Well, once again, we're here to celebrate the achievements and the contributions of some of the 17% of New Zealanders who live with disability. We have seven categories tonight with three finalists for each award. We'll also celebrate the life of our third inductee to the Attitude Hall of Fame, and of course, by the time we're done, we'll also know who will leave here tonight the winner of the Attitude ACC Supreme Award, which speaks for itself. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our first presentation this evening. It is the Attitude Courage in Sport Award. It's not intended for the rock stars and the elite performers. It's for someone who's got out there and pushed themselves, shown guts and determination. And we are delighted once again to have Westpac back with us to support this award for the fourth year in a row. And we welcome Sue Foley from the bank. Also here to introduce the finalists, a man who needs little introduction, Sir Murray Helberg, a man who's given the best part of 50 years to helping thousands of children with disabilities get involved in sport and lead an active life through the Helberg Trust, a legend of this country's sporting history. And with Sir Murray, a young man with a ton of courage and strength, Clayton Ma won gold at this year's Special Olympics World Summer Games in Athens, bench pressing 85 kilos. Would you please join me in welcoming Clayton Ma, Sir Murray Helberg, and Sue Foley. Thank you, Simon. On behalf of Westpac, can I say how proud we are to be a part of tonight? And can I congratulate all the finalists of the Attitude, Courage and Sport Award? Hi, I'm Clayton Ma. I, um, I've been in Greece for um, part of the end, and I got some gold and bronze because um, I'm my bodybuilder. I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> well, that was a hard act to follow, but I'll, I'll, I'll give it a crack. My congratulations and congratulations of all of you are due to the finalists in the various category awards here tonight. We are so proud of you for your life, for your achievements and for the way that you are attacking life. And with great pleasure for me to announce to you the finalists in the Attitude Courage in Sport Awards. They are Patricia McQueen, Conrad Ryan and Tony Crowther. On the Kapiti Coast, everybody knows Trish McQueen. She's got that kind of personality. But it was her desire to compete in a triathlon that took her to the heart of a community. For anyone that's ambitious. Trish lives with cerebral palsy and an intellectual disability. 
Trish joined a gym and proved herself as a woman with determination and guts. Just a week before her triathlon, she crashed off her bike and ended up in hospital. But Trish is one determined and courageous competitor. She was back on her bike the next day and she went on to complete all three legs of the Kapiti Women's Triathlon. Tony Crowther revels in simple pleasures, like an afternoon at the beach with her daughter Jasmine. Four years ago, Tony awoke to the shock of finding herself paralysed down one side, a stroke caused by her contraceptive pill. Jasmine was just eight months old. I was so exhausted, I just could, felt like I could barely do it, but I had to for her, so it made me get out of bed every morning. Last year, Tony raised $22,000 for the Stroke Foundation, more than any individual had previously raised. She challenged herself by swimming 6.5 kilometres from Rangitoto to Auckland. The road is Conrad Ryan's highway to success. He set himself the challenge of joining 1,500 competitors racing 160 kilometres around the base of Mount Taranaki. In driving rain, a third of the field gave up. Not Conrad. He just doesn't care about people's preconceived ideas of him or what he can do and should be able to do. He just thinks I can do it, and he does. He's one determined young man. He has a heart condition, limited sight, and other physical challenges but he competes regularly in eight different Special Olympic sports. Golf, athletics, soccer, basketball. And the haul of medals he's collected is proof of the dedication he brings to his sport. Love to give everyone a first prize, but there can only be one winner. It's Patricia McQueen. I would love to say thank you to Andrew for giving me this opportunity. I believe we all have a disability in some way. But I believe in myself the gift if you look to go because I have cash! We move now, ladies and gentlemen, to the Attitude Youth Award for a young person who's made a significant contribution to improving the lives of other disabled people. Our sponsor for the fourth year in a row is the Wayne Francis Charitable Trust, represented again tonight by trustee Helena Francis and with her, her daughter Jamie Blacksall. Here to announce the finalists is the star of TV2's hit after school show, Erin Simpson. Joining her, a young man who survived meningitis, a sportsman with a big future, Barney Koneferenisi. Good evening. My name's Elena Francis and um, I'm from the Wayne Francis Charitable Trust and as usual it's a pleasure to be here to celebrate the achievements of all the people that we'll be acknowledging tonight. So um, what I really wanted to say was that um, I've not yet met a young person who didn't know everything, everything about everything. Politics, money, sport, technology, relationships. And I thought it was a generational thing, but I do recall having a conversation with my father. And he told me that when I was 17 and I thought I knew everything, that at 20 I'd realise how little I did know and so on during the course of my life. And of course he was actually quite right. In the meantime, Barney wants to um, address you. Is that correct? First of all, I'd like to congratulate all the nominees and, well, I haven't quite have a speech, but I'll just say it out. First of all, I'd like to congratulate everyone else and hopefully you guys enjoy your night. You can be my friend on Facebook if you want to. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome, Barney, a man of many words. Now, he's also being very modest because he is a wonderful person and um, we're about to um, announce the nominees for the Youth Award and he is a great example of this, only 17, already representing New Zealand and now it is time to announce the, the nominees, well the finalists for the Attitude Youth Award. Finalists are Cameron Leslie, Nicholas Brocklebank and Gabrielle Hogg. 
23 years old, and already Gabrielle Hogg has an audience with government. Yet the doctors told her parents she would never be able to do much. Today she has her own business, helping parents to make sense of their child's autistic spectrum disorder. This is the guide that you're going to need for the rest of Joshua's life. Autism is like a puzzle and I'm helping kids to understand how their puzzle pieces fit together. That's what parents see in me is that hope that I give to them. I'm Nicholas Brocklebank and I'm nine years old. I fundraise money for um, things like muscular dystrophy and the Christchurch earthquake. Nicholas Brocklebank has written three cookbooks and has his own website. Having muscular dystrophy inspired him to fundraise for other kids like him. He sells cookbooks to raise funds for organisations like the Muscular Dystrophy Association. This is my medicine called Pregnazone. It helps my muscles get strong. Even though I've got muscular dystrophy, I can do lots and lots of things. Cameron Leslie is best known for winning gold at the Beijing Paralympics in 2008. Throughout my life, I think I've always had to prove myself that I can, I can do exactly what the next person can. Cameron is now studying journalism and has fronted a disability travel series. I think today I am comfortable with myself and I'm not worried about what other people have to think. Um, I don't feel like I have to constantly prove myself so much anymore. He's now using his lifetime experiences in leadership roles at university and in mentoring others. But right now, his sights are set on reclaiming gold at the London Paralympic Games in 2012. And the winner of the Attitude Youth Award goes to... Gabrielle Hogg. There was one time in my life where this may have not, never have happened. But thanks to some awesome people in my life, that have helped me to find my pathway, helped help me to find a voice. And I've got to um, say thanks to my mum, Ruth, over there, sitting next to my naturopath, Gina. She's an awesome mum. Our next award is for someone who epitomises the positive spirit at the heart of the Attitude TV series. A person who's overcome hardship to achieve their personal goals. This award is sponsored by Drake Medox, and joining us to present it, General Manager Gay Barton. Welcome back, Gay. And with Gay, two very familiar faces. He is Mr. Blair Strang, and his co-presenter, please welcome along with Gay and Blair, Charlotte Cleverly Bisman. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Drake Medox is very, very proud to be uh, sponsoring the Attitude Awards yet again. Um, and it's my pleasure to be here this evening. And this is my first time at the Attitude Awards, and it's... Uh... It's a, uh, it's a privilege to be here. Congratulations to all the finalists. I'm sure you're going to hear this all tonight, and also to the winners. It's, uh, it's a real honour for you all to, to be a part of this, and it's an honour for me to be a part of this, so thank you. The finalists for the Attitude Spirit Award are Mark Grantham, Chris Hanley, and Patrick Hedewini. Would you like a of chocolate? Yeah. Two, please. Every time Mark Grantham sells a chocolate bar, he knows a child on the other side of the world is going to benefit. I've sold more chocolate than anybody in New Zealand to help my kids. Mark's been selling chocolate since he was 12 years old. He's a regular on this Auckland shopping strip. Each year, Mark raises around $3,000 to support the five children he sponsors in Tanzania and India. Patrick Hirawini's legs don't work so well, but this big-hearted man has spent six years helping others. He volunteers helping people with disabilities learn to ride. I just fell in love with the place. Born with cerebral palsy, he's put in thousands of hours splitting and bagging firewood mowing lawns on one crutch and volunteering for others. I'll probably go without and give it to others, if I can. A drink driving accident on his 17th birthday resulted in Chris Hanley being paralysed. Just up ahead here is the spot where I had my accident. Always a funny spot to drive past, actually. 
A string of family tragedies followed. In a decade, he lost both parents and the brother he lived with. Against those odds, Chris has built a full and successful life. Designing innovations for himself led to a job selling wheelchairs, and he became the country's top salesman. But his greatest contribution has been to the community. Chris takes full responsibility for the accident. Now he's giving back as a leader in the Right Track program, steering young offenders back on course. If I can go along and talk to a few people about my experiences and, and how you know, my bad choices affected my life, and if they can get something out of that, then I think that's a really uh, valuable, valuable thing to give. And the winner of the Spirit of Attitude Award is Mark Grantham. The money that Mark provides to this community goes towards schooling, AIDS prevention and agriculture. I wish I could do more, but, but, but there's, there's one of me, and there's, there's one of me, and I wish I could do more for, for, for the community. To my kids, five kids that I support, and I, I love my kids. And can I say something else? I've got my books for sale. Um, Thirty dollars. I had uh, credit cards available. <laughs> Come and see me after. That. Thank you very much. Mark's giving me grief because last time I, I refused to buy the chocolate because my kids told me I was getting fat. <laughs> Here to sing I Am, the song he wrote that's become an anthem for disabled people all around the world, would you please welcome the one and only Mr Eddie Lowe. <laughs> see I'm one of a kind there's only one me don't be afraid cause I am different I just need you to realize that I am me I have a reason whatever I may be We move on to a new award now, the Attitude Making a Difference Award. This award recognizes someone who's made a significant contribution to improving the lives of people living with a disability. We are very grateful this evening to the IHC Foundation for coming on board to support this award, and we're delighted to have Foundation Trustee and National President of IHC New Zealand, Donald Thompson, here to present it. Would you please welcome Mr. Donald Thompson, Mr. Matt Frost, and Dame Rosie Horton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Donald Thompson and I'm a trustee for the IHC Foundation. The IHC Foundation is rather a new foundation and we're absolutely thrilled to be here tonight. We exist to make a difference in the lives of people with an intellectual disability. We do this by managing a small portfolio and making grants to individuals and organisations. 
So it is a real pleasure for the Foundation to be here tonight to be the sponsor of the Attitude Making a Difference Award. I think in terms of making a difference in this community, what is important is a sustained approach to that, but also an approach that acknowledges the youth of um, young disabled people and who we are, and that's what our three finalists do. So it is an absolute delight to me to acknowledge those three people uh, and to say that they have made a significant contribution to this community. It now gives me great pleasure to announce the finalists tonight for Making a Difference. They are Prue McNeil, Mike Gawley and Roy Bartlett. Mike Goulet has never forgotten the struggle it was to get his first job. He was born with a condition that affected his limbs, and the attitudes he came up against shaped his life. You've seen the look in people's eyes, thinking, oh my gosh, this, this, this is no good, this guy's not going to be able to do anything. Kia ora, and welcome to this edition of One in Five. I'm Mike Goulet. He's the reporter and producer of Radio New Zealand's programme One in Five. Mike's one of the founders of the Disabled Persons Assembly. For many years, he ran the mainstream supported employment program, placing hundreds of people with disabilities in work. Six months ago, Mike had a major stroke, from which he is still recovering. His partner, Helen, has been at his side through all his successes and challenges. He's still a champion for people with disabilities. It used to be that when you listen to a program about disability, you used to hear, as I say, these experts from the outside our experience being the voices that you would hear and that doesn't happen anymore. I'm really glad that we've brought that about through programs like Attitude and One in Five. Roy Bartlett loves seeing kids happy, especially his Star Jam buddy, Jaden. Hi, my name is Jaden, and I'm a lion. <laughs> Star Jam is a performance group for kids with disabilities. Have you seen Roy? Pardon, I can't hear you. Since they started in 2002, more than 560 kids have moved across the stage. What is your dream for kids like me? For you to live your life to the max and go beyond fulfilling your own dreams. That's a very good answer. Can I give you a hug? You sure can, buddy. As a child, Pam McNeil wasn't expected to achieve much. It was just the way things were for a blind child. I can remember one aunt saying to my mother that I was probably uneducable and it would be a waste of time sending me to school, that I'm not alone in that. As an adult student, Pam gained a master's in social work. As former head of the mainstream supported employment program, she's proud of placing hundreds of people into real jobs. Pam's a founder member of the Guide Dog Society and a leader in the Association of Blind Citizens. She now has her own business, consulting and mentoring in disability issues. I was absolutely determined to raise the profile of the abilities of disabled people and ensure that we got as many people employed in the public sector as possible. And the winner is Mike Goulet. And knowing Mike wasn't going to be able to be here this evening, we sent an Attitude crew to Wellington to give him the good news. Have a look. I'm both very happy and overjoyed to have won this award, but I'm also very humbled as well because I know there are a lot of other people out there who are doing what I've done over the last 20 to 30 years. And uh, it's on behalf of people that have done what I've done, I guess, and made a difference in their own way that I accept this award. Natalie Tapar wrote her first song at seven. She's been mentored by former Split Ends member Mike Chun and wants to make music a full-time career. Her song, Be Yourself, is about her belief that we don't have to conform to media ideals. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to the stage the one and only, the beautiful and talented Natalie Tepar. It's not about looks, it's not about race, it's not about gender, or whether you're gay or straight. It's not about how you have your hair, or the clothes that you wear. You don't have to be famous 
to get you anywhere in life just be yourself don't let nobody change you cheeks and be yourself people judge as we walk by placing us into categories based on stereotypes who cares about those little flaws that's what makes you unique looking good is not a law so why that cake to make up of your cheeks The next award recognises an elite athlete with a disability who's achieved at the highest level in his or her sport in the past year. The Attitude Sport Performer of 2011 is sponsored for the second time by Toyota New Zealand and joining us again to present the award is Toyota's GM Customer Services, Mr Spencer Morris. So we welcome back Spencer and also here for this award is one Dame Susan Devoy and with her from Attitude Pictures, Associate Producer Paralympic gold medal winner and Wheel Blacks captain, Mr. Dan Buckingham. Boy, what a bunch of achievements this lot have. Please welcome Dan, Spencer and Dame Susan. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Toyota is uniquely placed to make a contribution and tonight I'm delighted to announce our plans to further support this sector. This month we will commence uh, a pilot programme at North Shore Toyota our franchise dealership in Takapuna. The Toyota Mobility Program, as we're calling it, will provide a comprehensive package of measures uh, to cater for customers with specialist mobility needs so that we can support people with disabilities to become more independent through driving. If you're not an Auckland resident, don't worry, because if the demand is good enough, then we'll expand this program throughout the country. Thanks, Spencer. Uh, you know, there are, there are a few words that are a little overused when it comes to people with disabilities. Words like courageous, amazing, inspirational. So a word like inspirational is something that I don't use often and it's something I don't use lightly, but it is the perfect word to describe the next three finalists. I've had the privilege of seeing Dan, Soph and Jane in action and their passion to be the best at what they do inspires me to be better at what I do. Just like to say I've never been to an Attitude Awards uh, and now I know what I've been missing. Um, I think it's very hard for those of us that may not know or can imagine what it's like to live with a disability but can understand and appreciate how difficult life can be at times. And I just want to say that it's just admirable and courageous and brave and inspirational that all of you here tonight Endeavour to be the very best that you can be, and that's all that we ask from, from anyone. So tonight is a real testament of human spirit and, above all, um, aptly attitude. So it gives me great pleasure to announce the finalists tonight are Jane Parsons, Sophie Pascoe and Danny McBride. Eleven years ago, forestry worker Danny McBride was crushed by a falling tree. Fiercely independent, he returned to work in the industry and runs a small farm in Tirao. He's also created a whole new direction in life through sport. Danny committed himself to a brutal training regime, often training six days a week. You've got to have goals in your life, and I think if you, if you set your standards high, then there's, you've got more chance of achieving them. He was rewarded with selection for the New Zealand Elite Rowing Championships last year. In just 12 months, he went from novice to medalist. 
winning bronze in the 2010 World Rowing Championships. Jane Parsons is a Paralympic gold medalist and world champion in two different cycling disciplines. This year, she's added seven medals to her tally. The proudest moment for me this year was um, actually becoming world champ over in Italy. Jane's next big event on the road to London will be the World Track Championships in Los Angeles in February. In first place, the winners of the gold medals are Jane Parsons and Sonia Waddell, representing New Zealand. Paralympic gold medalist and world record holder Sophie Pascoe has dominated Paralympic swimming since she burst onto the international stage at the 2008 Beijing Paralympics. I'm in the sport because I love it and I have a passion and I go to the pool every day and I think, you know, this is, this is what I want to do. This year, Sophie broke the world record in the 100 metre butterfly and the 200 metre individual medley. I've had a pretty successful year actually. Globe trotting and medals are the fruits of her success, but sheer guts and determination make this 18 year old a champion. And the winner is Sophie Pascoe. I'd like to say a big thank you, and first and foremost to the finalists tonight. You've all had a successful year. Um, also, to the Attitude Awards. Um, obviously, we wouldn't have this without Attitude Pictures. and. You guys are very passionate about disabled people and that's what we want to see in this society. We want to see it grow. We want to see, we want to see a life that's created equalised. And this is my goal. <laughs> of, um, I'm a very passionate person about being equalised in this country. And um, so I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for sponsors um, and <laughs> um, also for my family and friends and for my coach. Um, we all do the hard yards. You all know that. We're all in this room here together. Of We've all had goals and dreams and we're all striving towards them. And Some that have been achieved and some we still have to achieve. And obviously we have London coming up next year. So, London. <laughs> Thanks. Would you please welcome to sing Follow the Moon, the fabulous Caitlin Smith. Time now for our next award, the Attitude ACC Employer Award, recognising an employer who provides outstanding opportunities and support for people with disabilities. ACC has been the sponsor of this award from the outset, and it's my pleasure to welcome for the first time ACC's new Chief Executive, Mr Ralph Stewart. And joining Ralph are Minnie Baragwanath and Tanya Black. Thank you, Simon. Distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen. This is my first time at the awards with the ACC team. In fact, I've only been with the ACC team for 10 weeks. 
that when it comes to particularly serious injury in New Zealand, there is one clear and deliberate principle, and it is always to focus on strength and never to focus on weakness. I can see by the people who have been on the stage here tonight and the people around us all here, clearly it is a principle we must hold on together. It is a very clear principle. On behalf of the ACC team, I would just like again to thank all the employers who are here tonight. We partner with Business in New Zealand to ensure and always to maintain and uphold the principle of support the strength. Thank you. Um, I know after my own accident and, and becoming disabled, I wondered what on earth I was going to do and actually where in the world did I fit. Um, getting back to work was a major part of my rehabilitation. ACC actually collaborated creatively with my employer and I was able to rejoin the workforce and learn a new career. I'm now in a job that I absolutely love. And the whole point of this award is to encourage employers to create opportunities for people with disabilities. Thanks, Tanya. Um, look, it's an absolute honour to be here tonight representing the Bee Institute. Um, I think if there's one thing that um, everyone here takes away tonight is that when someone has a meaningful job, it can transform people's lives. So the challenge I'd probably put to everyone tonight is if in any way you can create employment opportunities for people with disabilities, it, is, it would be absolutely transformative. It's a thing that can create the biggest shift in terms of an accessible society. Thank you all very much and, and congratulations to the amazing finalists. And the finalists in tonight's employment award are Mission Heights Junior College, Wintech, and an extra pair of hands. Jane Richardson set up a business offering domestic services. She was looking for the best people to do the job. Now she has three deaf workers on her staff of 30. People often ask me, or they might say to me, isn't it wonderful that you employ people with disabilities? But actually it's a win-win because they do the same job as a hearing person and they're doing as good a job as a hearing person. Finding work is one of the biggest obstacles for anyone with a disability. A lot of hearing people with businesses will say, you know, deaf can't do that. Um, but Jane's not like that. You know, she thinks well, we can do anything. Jane Richardson was willing to be open-minded to take a chance on a new employee. It's amazing what people can achieve if they've just given a few tools and the right support. Mission Heights Junior College in South Auckland embraces students from many different ethnicities and abilities. We're a really diverse school. We've got children from all over the world here. Fifteen students are in the Deaf Education Unit, but some of the hearing students and the staff have opted to take sign language as a subject. There are four employees with hearing impairments on staff. It just was a really natural progression to say, let's have um, some deaf workers in the school who can actually fulfil those same uh, role modelling. I love the environment. The communication is easy here with all the staff and the teachers. In other jobs that I've had in the past, there hasn't been very much um, conversation or, or, you know, levels of communication for me. We don't have things that, perhaps stereotypes, that make us reluctant to look at some people as, as people who could contribute positively to our work environments. Training and education provider Wintec is one of Hamilton's largest employers. Their route to hiring employees with a disability was an unusual one. It started with toilets. We were sitting in a room uh, doing uh, legal compliance and, and counting disability toilets. And someone had the question, well, we have all these disability toilets, but where are all the disabled people? Good question. They set themselves a challenge to actively recruit from the disability sector. Wintec is a great place to work. They are open to my disability and the things that may be hard for me, so that they, they know that maybe I need a little bit of help. After a bachelor's degree, Tegan Morris found her niche at Wintec. It was given the opportunity to have dignity and 
and responsibility. These people are normally the highest performers in the organisation. Their positive attitude and they're eager to hold down a normal job uh, supersede normally any other attitude in the organisation. I would say to any employer out there, give it a go, because it's definitely worth it. And it could even be the cornerstone to your culture. And the winner is the Mission Heights Junior College. <laughs>
And 50 years on, he's still working in the industry. I'm not here because of me. I'm here because people put me here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the 2011 Attitude Artistic Achievement Award goes to Eddie Lowe. This is a bit overwhelming for me. I was really hoping, I got a, a phone call from a couple of my granddaughters tonight and say, saying, uh, good luck, granddad. And at that time, I was really hoping for my other nominees to um, win something. And, but I guess this is on behalf of all of us and all the other people who have been nominated for all their different categories this evening. And it's my first time here, and it's an absolute pleasure. I've just been blown away. Thank you so very much, everybody. Shortly from the winners we've seen this evening, we will announce the Supreme Award. It speaks for itself. But first, a significant part of the evening, the induction of a new member to the Attitude Hall of Fame. Now, the Hall of Fame recognises outstanding, lifelong service to the disability community. It is my honour and great pleasure to welcome now the Governor-General, the Right Honourable Sir Jerry Mataparai, who will read the citation for the 2011 inductee to Attitude Hall of Fame. The award is sponsored again, supported again this year by the Lion Foundation, which was a founding supporter of these awards. Chief Executive Phil Holden is with us tonight. And thanks to the generosity of Air New Zealand, our inductee will receive travel to the value of $5,000. Welcome to His Excellency, the Right Honourable Sir Jerry Mataparai and Phil Holden. Your Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, well, it's been a fantastic night and uh, I'm absolutely thrilled to be here this evening to uh, uh, talk a little bit about our organisation and, and these fantastic awards. And for us, as an organisation, we're only as good as the organisations we support, and the Attitude Awards for us provide such an important link to the community. And it's our privilege to play a small part in helping that happen. So well done to everybody tonight, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to introduce you to Mary Schnackenberg. And the best way to do this is to use some of Mary's own words. And I quote, I guess I am a little unusual in the blindness agency world. Few of my management colleagues are also totally blind, end users of their services. I'm encouraged because I am a beneficiary of what I do. Challenged because I am blind 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and continue to ponder on what to do next to improve things. My head is constantly in a tug of war between the ideal and the pragmatic. I have no doubt I will make the wrong call on occasions, but life is never dull. Mary's long and substantial contribution has been recognised in many ways already, most notably in her appointment in 2007 as a companion to the New Zealand Order of Merit for services to the vision impaired community. Mary was born blind in a family of sighted parents and four sighted siblings. Her parents were avid readers and instilled a love of learning in each of their children. Studying for an arts degree, Mary set about finding more accessible formats of her textbooks. She found them overseas in British and American sources of braille and audio. Mary's work took her abroad as often as possible in her search for better ways to produce and distribute accessible information, ways that could be adapted and improved into world-class solutions here in New Zealand. In 1997, Mary discovered the genius of the DAISY format, which allows a reader to navigate through a digital talking book in a way not too different from the sighted experience. Her work in accessibility issues includes a substantial involvement in getting public transport providers to consider the information needs of sight impaired users. This list is far from exhaustive. Her life is truly a life of considerable achievement in a chosen field. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2011 inductee to the Attitude Hall of Fame, Mary Schnackenberg.
Your Excellency, um, fellow uh, the judges, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you so much. It's um, quite a long walk up there. Thank you to, to Livy uh, for guiding me. Um, I suppose I have been incredibly privileged to be around for a lot of different developments. And during all those developments, there, there has been a team. And I see the team continuing after I've left with uh, Livy working at the foundation. Thank you for the braille. It's still as good as it always used to be. I'm very pleased to see. And, uh, and as part of that team, a key member of the team has been my partner, Clive Lansing. And Clive is down in the audience, so why don't you stand, Clive? Um, The arts are very important, and at last they're being opened up to uh, the d disabled community in a, in a much wider sense. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to my team, and thank you for this wonderful award. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is time now for the grand finale. Time to find out who will win the Attitude ACC Supreme Award, and with it, the $5,000 worth of Air New Zealand travel and the use of a Toyota Signature Class vehicle for a year. Now, if there's any doubt about the impact these awards have, take a look at this little montage on the screens either side. These, well, that's me, these are photos sent in by previous winners who tell us how their awards and the trips they've made with their prize money have further shaped their lives. ACC has sponsored the Supreme Award in each of the four years we've been going, and I'd like to welcome now ACC board member Mr Murray Hilda, and joining Murray is the country's chief human rights commissioner, a former managing director of Special Olympics Asia Pacific, a former New Zealand Rugby Union chief executive, and current Attitude Awards trustee, David Rutherford. Welcome to you both. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, I'm delighted to be invited here tonight to present the Attitude ACC Supreme Award. We'll find out in a few moments who they managed to single out as a supreme winner. But before we do this, I'd like to say that all the finalists are supremely inspiring people to my mind. I've spent the last two years in Asia working from India to Japan. And it's nights like this that makes me proud to be home and proud to be a New Zealander. Um, one of the people I learned of while I was overseas was a Bengali poet called Rabindranath Tagore, who said that the unity we seek in the world is not the unity of uniformity, but the harmony of diversity. And this is a country that is leading the way in the harmonisation of diversity. And the other thing that you've learned here tonight is focus on what people can do, not what people can't do. Focus on their strength not on their weakness. This is the most amazing thing I've ever had anything to do with. It's a joy to be involved in and just keep it going forever. Thank you. Uh, and finally, we've seen seven uh, great uh, winners tonight and many more great nominees, uh, but now it's time to find out who the Supreme winner is. I'm honoured to present the ACC Attitude Supreme Award to Mike Goulet. As you know, Mike is unwell. He had a stroke and recently underwent more surgery, which means he isn't well enough to travel to be here this evening. So 
we went to Wellington to film his acceptance. Ladies and gentlemen, Attitude ACC Supreme Award winner, Mike Gawley. And we wish Mike all the very best for your rehabilitation, Mike. I'm totally stoked and very overwhelmed because I was very unexpected. I mean, I knew I was in there to the making a difference category, and to have won that was something indeed. But, that, but now, you know, the overall award, well, wow, that's just so much. I, I can't begin to say how much I feel about that. And it couldn't come, have come at a better time in my life, to be quite honest. You know, it's the sort of thing that makes you realise that your life is valuable, and it's, I'm glad I'm here, still here, and still able to be involved, um, whether it's in the media or continuing to be involved in DPA and just defending and, and looking out for human rights for disabled people. People now realise that it, it is nothing about us without us, that decisions that affect our lives must involve us, we must, we must be part of the discussions, the negotiations and the decisions. To the disability community and to all those who've believed in me, my friends and colleagues, my parents who turned what could have been a story of tragedy into one of celebration and hope. To you. Yeah, to you, Mike, and to all your wonderful support. And yeah, the fantastic disability community. To this point. And to mm. Attitude Television and, yeah. and the innovation of what they're doing yeah. here. It's tremendous. Mm. Oh, cheers. cheers. Get well soon, Mike. Thank you very much to Murray and to David. And David said something, uh, well, there's so many things that have resonated with me tonight, but David said, strength through diversity, and you can apply that in so many areas. It's basically a maximum of the share market, so why shouldn't it apply everywhere else? You know, you diversify, you get stronger. We just need to open up our minds, our hearts, our spirits, and our attitudes. <laughs> Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.